like to make a motion to uh, nominate Craig Waits as the acting city chair for today's meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, that motion was for this meeting only, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, just making sure. Um, thanks for everybody for coming today. Um, our chair and our vice chair both could not be here, so that's why I'm going to appoint an acting chair. Um, but um, thanks for everybody taking the time. It's always nice to get the city and the council together. Um, this is a this is a subsequent meeting, a meeting we had about a year and a half ago in, in regards to the, the Mill District. And, um, excuse me, thank you. And um, we will continue, obviously continue these conversations and we will welcome the public too. So with that, I'll uh, like to call the meeting to order. Well, we got the uh, city will call their portion of the meeting. Yeah, they did not have Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just, I'm Heather Cairns here on yeah. behalf of the county okay. planning. Okay, commission. I know you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. And so, I mean, as a county, we'll call it. Excuse me. That's fine. That's fine. But I repeat, this is a great opportunity to get the city and county working together. And I think it's great that everybody took the time to come. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and we have a public notice announcement. Oh, they were saying I didn't have to make one. Stephen's not here. Yeah, so um, but this is a meeting that, um, it's my understanding, you know, from the county we usually have a public announcement. This was a meeting that there's no vote being taken at. This is an informational meeting only. Um, but I do believe that it was advertised and was offered to the public, but it's not something that has any, um, there'll be no vote taken by either commission. Okay. Um, great, thank you. At this point, if we could go around the table real quick, start with you, John. And we'll start with April and just, just, just the state name and the commission that you uh, reside on. Uh, that would be great. Thank you. April James, City of Columbia Planning Commission. Karen Yip, Richland County Planning Commission. Dale Stigmeyer, City of Columbia Planning Commission. Craig Waits, City of Columbia Planning Commission. The Trail Hart, City of Columbia Planning Commission. Prentice McLeod, Richland County Planning Commission. And I'm Heather Cairns from the Richland County Planning Commission. David Tuttle, Richland County Planning Commission. Jamie Frost, City of Columbia Planning Commission. John Taylor, City of Columbia Planning Commission. I know the, the city planning commission has you know, done in the past and, and I'm 
sure you all have as well, um, because that way we can take that same copy to the councils as well so that we can continue this united effort. So just keeping that in mind, so if, if you can't think of something today, but you think of something in the next couple days, um, you know, that gives us the opportunity to, to talk about those things amongst ourselves and, and, and change the document if we feel that it needs to happen. So. Yes, um, and also, please feel free to get refreshments, and we'd like to thank uh, our other members of the well, public for being here and our city and county planning staff, John Phillips, Tracy Hayden, and Christian Hampton. And also, we will have our presentation by the Boudreaux group. We'll go through basically the area. So we'll, we'll turn it over to you. Is this in your right? Good afternoon, everyone. So, all right, let me make sure this is it. Um, I'm Irene Dumas Tyson with Boudreaux. And, and I do have to tell you, we, we've gone through a new branding. So it was the Boudreaux group, but now we're Boudreaux. So anyway, so it's kind of, we're kind of getting used to saying our name differently too. But Irene Dumas Tyson here with Nick Berger too as well. And we have had the privilege of working with both the city and the county, um, the capital city mill district um, plan. And this, it really has been an honor for us. And we have gotten to know our city and our county in new ways and have made a lot of friends in the process. Um, so I'm going to put some of y'all on the spot. Have y'all all read through the plan? We just got I just got Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what we are going to do is to go through this plan very quickly. We're not covering every single page of this. Please feel free to stop us as we're going through, but we do just kind of want to walk you through all of this and then we're going to have plenty of time for questions and any observations after that but again do not hesitate to stop us as we're going through this um, we had an amazing team that we worked with throughout this entire process not only uh, the city and county lee and latasha have just been these amazing project managers too as well for us to work with but all the city and county planning staff but in addition to boudreaux we had tool design group out of spartanburg who are our light pad plan experts land plan group south provided landscape architecture and civil engineering we had City Bob out of Charleston, who really were looking at markets, economic uh, development um, ideas. We had Fuss and O'Neill, who were um, in really looking at kind of stormwater management for us, a little bit of, of civil engineering too as well. And then RS and H out of Savannah. Um, and they were our just really amazing transportation, particularly with a special focus on, on trains. Um, you know, kind of advising us and consulting on that too as well. So this has been a really great team effort. Um, on top of that, we have this very dedicated group, we call it the PAC, um, who advised us. And these are, we've got Derek back here and Gregory who were very much involved. So Derek obviously representing USC, Gregory with the COG. But these are people who live in this community, who work in this community, who own property in this community and they were invaluable to us throughout this entire process and attended a lot of meetings and gave great feedback very broad deep passionate feedback to us so we we could not have done this without them as well <clears throat> and, and thanking all of you because um, we love the imagining part we love coming up with implementation but so much of this is going to rest on your on you too as we're really taking this forward in addition to both city council and county council and um, so we just can't thank you enough for this opportunity um, this has been a long process so we started back last April um, and really gathering we had divided up into three phases phase one was really all of our research and analysis that we did that's where we gathered a lot of public input we spent a lot of time walking and analyzing traffic and looking at architecture and stormwater management and really paying attention to lots of transportation data um, and so that was you know we got feedback from y'all from that we were able to begin to give shape to our recommendations and so phase two of this was really kind of working those different ideas and what we wanted to do and then by the time we hit phase three we had some pretty solid input um, ideas about the direction of our recommendations and we've got, you'll see here, these are all the, the times that we really reached out to the public and had um, meetings for them. And then we had our last public input back in um, August. 
and we had some really wonderful feedback. But the good thing is, that I have to say, is the public had been engaged all along, and there were no surprises. And so we had a lot of support for where we are now. Um, and then we are right here with y'all, um, working with the planning commissions. Um, we're going to go through just real quickly kind of a summary of analysis and input. And this is um, a level of asset mapping. So we really wanted to understand what is wonderful, what is sacred about being right here in the Capital City Mill District. And you can see those. I mean, we looked at cultural assets, we looked at architectural assets, natural environment, transportation. We looked at different types of economic development assets that were available. But then we also looked at what's not here. And um, you can see some of the things that are not here, connectivity, more, more sidewalks, more green space, um, more places to really hang out here too. They also wanted, you know, would like to see more home ownership, um, owner-occupied housing here, younger families, um, they need a grocery store, but y'all know that. Okay, so, um, but then, you know, really beginning to look at opportunities here to create entrepreneurial space, small businesses, because they really would like to have more of that neighborhood level, you know, neighborhood amenity level of businesses here, right here. But, but more than anything, to not lose the fabric and the character of this mill district, that it predominantly stays residential, that we keep the, just, just that really beautiful vernacular that's here, and definitely don't want to stop growth, but they want whatever happens here to continue to celebrate what is the, the unique character here. Um, and then these were just some of the, where, kind of where you can see where the concentration, obviously residential is concentrated here, commercial, more industrial here. We've got some really nice nodes of activity, kind of cultural or retail, and then green space. And we'll turn here. So for the purposes of this plan, um, we divided and looked at different neighborhoods. So the map you can see here, there's the Granby neighborhood. Take it off. Okay. Um, there's the Whaley neighborhood, the Granby, the Olympia, and then we defined another zone called uh, the Assembly Street zone. So it's really hard to tell sometimes where the line is drawn. Is it at the mills? Is it along Olympia Avenue? Is it right at Assembly Street? So. Um, the next series of images um, will show you some of kind of the character that we grab from each of these different neighborhoods. So Whaley, for example, um, there's a lot of single family housing of different styles. Um, 7-1 Whaley that were here, a number of commercial structures and churches, um, and a lot of tree-lined uh, streets in the area. For Granby, again, a mixture of a lot of different types of housing, uh, predominantly the salt box style, which is um, really well known in the area um, in Granby and a series of the new 612 um, mills um, housing and then some small commercial uh, some small commercial uses and churches again. The Olympia neighborhood again is another mixture of different types of housing um, with the Olympia Mill and also Olympia School, Olympia Union Hall um, and again just very predominantly um, neighborhood area. But once we move to the Assembly Street corridor, it's a mixture of um, some of the different mills um, that are um, some of the historic mills in the area and a lot of different mixture of commercial uses um, and a lot of opportunities for growth and redevelopment. This is really beginning to look at what some of those outside influences are that, be that can begin to impact redevelopment in the future. Um, you've got, you know, a, a pretty healthy industrial area that's become, that is really beginning to impact this. Obviously, USC and looking at the Inna Vista. Um, you've got the fairgrounds and football games. So these are some of the outside influences that begin, begin to impact. But, you know, what we really would like to do is, is do what we can to protect this neighborhood zone, provide for that very active commercial corridor. Um, and, but, but again, find that way for some of these other types of, of residential and commercial to, to happen here. We did look at some census data. I'm not gonna dwell in this. You've got more detail about this in the report that I urge you to read, but one of the things we found by and large is this is a pretty young community um, due to the number of students who live here. Um, and one of the other things, and, and you know, and it was, we, we kind of had some, played around with this, but you can't help but um, 
I guess acknowledge the fact that there are, um, you can see here, the 18 to 24 year olds, you know, but due to the student housing that is here within the, the Capital City Mill District. Um, and this is an analysis of owner occupied versus rental, non owner occupied here too. And again, we heard over and over again that those who live here within the Capital City Mill District truly do want to enhance and increase the number of those who are living here. Owner occupied is, is one of the goals. And that's not, you know, students are always going to be a part of the fabric here, which is great, but how can we begin to, to increase opportunities for home ownership here as well? And so to really begin to give form to the recommendations, it was very important to establish a vision and those guiding principles and then to have some goals. And y'all have all of this, I don't have the page number in front of me, but you're going in detail here. But by establishing that vision and then what those guiding principles were in here, we decided that what we're really wanting to do, the recommendations can be divided up into four really big ideas. And then from there we have our implementation strategies. I'm not going to dwell on the principles and the goals yet, but I just want to get across to you that really the bottom line of the vision here is that everyone one wants this to be a thriving community. That means it's a thriving place to live, it's a thriving place to do business, it's a thriving place to go for recreation, particularly nature-based recreation. It's a beautiful community. It already is beautiful, but there are definitely those areas that we can improve. So the, the Capital City Mill District is known for its beauty. It's an attractive destination. Um, you, you're already beginning to get that, and obviously 701 is one of those catalyst uh, buildings that has made this more of a destination. But they really do want a place, it's going to be a place where people will come and visit, walk around, spend some money, add to that thriving nature. But that it really, everything that's done here in the future really embodies this, the community spirit, so which is important. Um, and we heard over and over again that the Capital City Mill District needs to be a place and not a pass-through. It is a pass-through now from game day traffic to people trying to get around trains, um, I mean, state fair, you name it. But they want this to be, again, going back to that idea that this place, that this community is a destination and not passing through. So again, the four big ideas that really are kind of give form to the recommendations. The first is to implement placemaking policies and projects. Again, making this a place. The second big idea is to manage the trains, traffic, and transportation. The third is to unify and connect with the, the district, with the greater community. It's on a couple of levels. Unify and connect within the mill district, but how this mill district also connects to the greater community out there. And then four, to improve environmental stewardship. This is such a unique place here. To be on the banks of the Congaree River, to have Rocky Branch. It, it really, there are parts of the mill district that feel like you are out in the middle of the country, right here in the midst of the city. So there, there's just no other place like it within Richland County, I don't think, where you can be right smack dab in the middle of the city and then feel like you're, in, you, you, you're just kind of in the middle of, of the beautiful country. So again, that's kind of about organizing things here. So to get on the, the first one, placemaking. Um, I'm gonna turn this over to Nick and, and um, to, well, yeah, you need that right here. So like Irene said, the first uh, big idea is implement placemaking policies and projects. So to start that, we actually need to look back at the existing land use, the existing future land use, and the existing zoning, both in the city and the county. So the map you see here, there's a lot of different zones or colorations of the different areas of land use. So for the purposes of this plan, we wanted to unify that so that the city and county, as they move forward with adopting their new, their new land use and zoning codes, that We'll have a unified land use um, uh, code that will allow future development um, to fall in many of these categories. So in the yellow, you'll see urban core mixed residential. Um, that's actually a new one that we're proposing um, in addition to uh, what the city and county are working on. But the next three, the urban core activity center, the orange, the purple, the activity center, and then the Purple, the employment campus, those actually are tying already in to existing um, land use um, categories. So For the city. For the city. Yeah. So 
The next uh, series of images I'll just give a little bit more information. So predominantly the Mill District is residential. We all know that, but there's also a lot of opportunity in addition to the single family attached and detached housing, there's a lot of opportunities, especially along Whaley and especially along Olympia that have some small commercial uses, which will add to the vitality of this neighborhood and provide many of the amenities that are missing. The Urban Core um, Neighborhood Activity Center, um, much of these areas, some along Olympia, some along uh, Assembly, and a little bit along Whaley um, will be mainly, mainly two-story um, commercial, but they won't be as quite the scale as some along Assembly Street. They will again be more of this mill vernacular architecture and really provide a lot of amenities, a lot of cultural aspects uh, to the mill district. The third one um, is the Community Activity Corridor, much of the area along part of the South Assembly here. Um, a lot of the, the Places here will be much larger, two, three, four story maybe even, but it could also be a lot of reuse and infill development. Um, but there's a lot of opportunities um, for a lot of uh, businesses, um, possibly multifamily housing, um, and a lot of connection um, to the greater city in this area. And then the employment campus, the last um, post future land use category, will be a lot of spaces for entrepreneurs to start up businesses will be places um, with maker spaces, innovative spaces, uh, commercial uses, uh, offices, and such. So together with these land use categories, um, it is the hope that we can uh, attract more people to live here, uh, increase, the, increase the home ownership rate, and, and really make this a thriving community, beautiful community that it already is. So some of the potential uh, development that could be here is a lot of small commercial uses that could line sort of Olympia and Whaley Avenue. Some of those uses could be a coffee shop, could be a grocery store, could be a retail shop, just small uses that uh, provide many amenities to the community. And then some larger ones, again along Assembly Street um, and some of these uh, places where businesses can start up and um, actually can connect some of these to the greater community and the greater city. So we're not going to go through all these, but um, for the implementation strategies to actually implement some of these placemaking policies and projects, we have to look at them in the one to three years, the three to six, and beyond six years. So there's a lot we can do now, but there'll be a lot of um, planning of how we can achieve such things as home ownership, improving that, and um, just a lot of ways we can um, create place and, already, and enhance the space that's already here. So Irene will now go into big idea two, which relates to trains and traffic. Yep. Let me get the desk. Okay, so we've got place making, and then secondly, what we heard from everyone is stop the trains, stop the traffic. You know, we've just got, we got to get rid of the trains, got to get rid of the traffic. So. Um, but then, you know, I had several people who told me who kind of grew up in the neighborhood, they're like, well, the trains are just part of our fabric. It's kind of what we do. But we do need to manage that, and it's really important. So what, what you see here is just a diagram of the at-grade crossings and the number of times trains kind of go through this neighborhood, which is a lot. Um, and there are, there are several reasons to really begin to look at these at-grade crossings. Um, number one, um, you know, for those of you who might live here or do any work here in the district, you know, you can kind of be completely cut off from the rest of the city, depending on when the train's going through. That can be loud. But then we also have people who live in this neighborhood, and then we also have a lot of students who live in the neighborhood or around the neighborhood who are going through. So some of this really has to do with, um, do with safety. So this is one of our, one of the goals that we're hoping to do is to remove several of these at-grade crossings. We have five alternatives that we are presenting, recommendations. These were developed with a lot of community input. I will have to say that one of the things that happened throughout this process that was really unprecedented, and this has a lot to do with Bev Davis, who is our, our train guy, girl, woman, you know, for um, RS and H, but Bev was able to have a couple of meetings with CSX, with Norfolk Southern, with DOT, and others. 
and to have some really fruitful conversations about what can we do in the future about these trains and how, and how can we, not to take the trains away, but how can we manage that? So again, the, the mill district really is more of a place. Um, they are interested in exploring the idea of rail consolidation. And so I would think if there is that one big, huge recommendation and that big, bold move, it really is rail consolidation. What that would do, and you're going to see, so this is um, a common theme on all the alternatives that we're going to show for you. So, uh, but uh, for right now, so you have the line, the, there's the line here, and obviously this one. Our recommendation is the rails be consolidated on this line. What that begins to do is to open up a lot of potentially developable land. It also takes away several, many of the at-grade rail crossings here. So it directs the rail traffic here and away. Now you're still gonna have the trains coming over here from the Casey rail yard. Um, but you can see, so the dotted red line right here is the rail that we hope is going to one day go away through consolidation. So that, that is a common thing. So of the five alternatives that, that we're going to show you, the first being is a road diet along UG Street. Um, and is everybody clear with what a road diet is? No. Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. So a road diet is where we, we take measures to usually narrow roadways um, in order to slow traffic down, to improve circulation, but to also to make it safer for multimodes, um, bike paths and pedestrians. So that's, that's where, you know, sometimes we have really large lanes or you go from six lanes and you really, you really don't need that, the capacity's not there. So doing a road diet on UG, UG Street is, is another one of those big moves. We feel it's very important for, a certain, for several reasons, but one is that at, at the, and we'll show this later on, but at Blossom UG Street is where you begin that, that diet. So that by the time you get down here, you realize you're entering a neighborhood. Yes. Again, remember they don't want to pass through, they want a place. So this is again all going back to support placemaking here. Um, Y'all may have known, so there was a, a study done um, about doing a flyover back in, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, was it 1999? 89, 89. Um, where the recommendation was to do a flyover, basically to bypass the mill district, but it would start on UG Street, it would have a flyover here, somehow here, but it would land on Whaley Street, basically right outside this, uh, this building, is where that would, and then it would come down, so all of that traffic then would be, would go down Olympia Avenue and out. The neighborhood and, and the residents here said, no, business owners, I mean, it would have a huge impact, and they did not support that. Um, and one main reason is because they really, it would, Olympia Avenue is the main street. It's historic and they wanted to make sure that we maintain that. So our recommendations honor that. Um, that we, we want to keep Olympia Avenue as that main street and we don't believe that you should have a flyover landing on Lane Street right outside the door. So although that is still one of those options that DOT will consider but they have also said that they're going to take our recommendations these alternatives and they will be very be those that they do consider so this would be a road diet on UG Street and doing some at grade improvements here where the rail crosses over UG Street um, and let's see and then this has well, I'm sorry so this would be that be a new connection right there um, right, that would just be a roadway right there that would come over where the right of way is. So instead of a flyover, it's just a roadway that would, would end up here. All right, so that's what, I'm sorry y'all. Okay, got that one. Sorry, this is the other one. This is the, this is the flyover. So this would be a flyover right here that would land on Catawba Street. Um, and what we're showing where the abandoned rail, um, rail line is going to be, the rail bed here, that could be a, a multi-use path. It could be another interior street here to, to improve connectivity. So we don't necessarily know what that would mean, but it does provide other opportunities. All right, so this is a flyover on the existing DOT right-of-way. 
that would land on Catawba, and you could potentially go out here or you could turn here. The next alternative is taking advantage of the right of way from the abandoned um, railroad area right here. So still a flyover coming off of UG Street. Where, that's where the train track used to be, but just taking advantage of that and again coming out on assembly. Um, you know, this would create another way to access Assembly Street. That's our third alternative. The next one would be on UG Street, so we would not have any type of a flyover. We would still have a road diet, but then we, at the UG Street um, rail intersection, UG Street would go under the railroad track. And then so you would be coming under the railroad track here and again out on Wayland. Um, so, and then that, so that would have some braid separation, and, you know, which would separate the, you know, all the pedestrian with um, traffic and vehicular traffic from the trains going by. And then the next one is an underpass. So instead of having an underpass here, we would do an underpass grade separation on the existing right of way that's over here. And that would come out potentially here or even out on. You know, right, yeah, come out right here. And you could take Catawba, you know, or Whaley to come out. So, I, I, yes. I think I can describe it. I'm just curious. So, the, um, at the very top, like under the D of gray, right, right there. there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're getting rid of the plan is to get rid of the dash train, mm -hmm. and then the yellow was consolidated. Right. So, those two train tracks today, do they consolidate just off the page, or do they run as they're parallel about, roads? They're about right up here. So they do eventually consolidate. I think they're, yeah. Uh, gosh, I'm pr yeah, I'm pretty sure. <coughs> yeah, yeah, but, but they, do con they do converge right there. And there, and there are other places, too, where they converge. And then you've got, and then you do have this line coming over from Casey. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, that sounds marvelously exciting that you can get rid of that one railroad line. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay. All right, so again, just to kind of reiterate, so there's one that is just, and again, all, all of them, are, we're, we're calling for rail consolidation. Um, the first the first alternative we showed you is just an improved, um, and they all have the UG Street Road Diet too. So the first one would be improve the at-grade crossing at UG Street. The next two are flyovers, but just in different uh, right-of-ways. And, it's, and the last two are doing underpasses. You know, one, an underpass on UG Street and another underpass on the right of way here. Well, don't they all take the, the abandoned railroad to connect, to take assembly straight? Right. And, and again, and we're not necessarily saying that this is a street. It could be a street. It could be a multi-use path. It could be part of the Greenway. But the fact is, it really does provide a really great opportunity for that connectivity within the, sure. within the district. Okay, so I'm going to go through real quick. All right, um, we do have catalyst projects, but I think what is most important, there is the NEPA process, and that is a process that DOT is about to undertake. And I don't know, um, have y'all heard any more updates about when that's going to start? Sometime in the fall. Um, it is incredibly important that this community be actively engaged in the NEPA process. DOT is aware of our alternatives that we are recommending, and we, we need to have them there and engaged to really speak for the community. Yes. What's NEPA? NEPA. It's <laughs> <laughs> and I am just trying, but it is it's an environmental. Forgot what the um, um, national. the national. Yeah. yeah. Oh, national EPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's national, but it is an environmental assessment. Okay. Before that, that they have to do before they can do any large corridor improvements. Okay. So. And so through this process, they will create the preferred alternative. Um, and of those alternatives, there also is a no build where they just don't do anything. You know, that is always an option on the table for them. But again, the most important thing for, for this community to do right now is to be engaged with that process um, and, and to really speak up for the, for the community. Um, the other thing that can begin immediately that we think is very important is to begin working with the Casey Rail Yard too as well because some of the problems just have to do with the management of trains in and out of the Casey. A lot of that kind of sitting and idling and timing. And so that's something that, that can begin right now. 
Then we're also recommending a comprehensive traffic study. A lot of these recommendations are truly going to need that detailed data from that traffic study um, moving forward. But that's something that's going to be incredibly beneficial. So, all right. So um, unify and connect the district. I mean, what we have here is again a big um, goal was to not only connect within the district, but how this district connects with the outside. And what you see here is a recommended network of, of bike and pedestrian facilities too as well. And this obviously is going to connect with the Columbia bike path plan that they have. And um, you know, West, West Columbia, Casey, and Springdale are also working on their bike path plan. There's opportunities to connect with it. What's so exciting is that this is, can be a very, this mill district and what it's done with the bike and pedestrian facilities can really do a lot to complement and enhance what's already being done right now. Um, there are five corridor improvements that we're going to show you that we think that are important to focus on. And I'm going to go through these really quickly. All right, so this is the UG Street and Blossom Street intersection. This is where the road diet will begin. And so I recommend, so just to kind of put you in place, so this is UG Street going towards the Mill District. This is um, Casey over here. This is going towards campus. So this is Blossom Street. Um, and we feel that this is a great place for us to begin those road improvements. Dual left lanes. I mean, we want to try to get most of the traffic that we can from, Blo from UG Street onto Blossom Street and Assembly Street. Those corridors are designed for that traffic. The capacity is there. It needs to have better management. But then we begin to, to begin putting our, our road diet in place here with um, dedicated separated bike lanes and doing some landscaping. And then the idea is even once you get past the Carolina's baseball field, you're going to do a little bit more dieting too. So again, by the time you get down there, you're like, I'm about to enter the capital city mill district. I'm no longer on just this busy industrial road and how can I get through? You're going to a very special place. Okay, another idea. So this is, um, again, UG Street. That as it becomes Whaley, this is the railroad right there. And <coughs> so you can see how we're down to two lanes. One coming in, one going out, doing at grade improvements, whatever those need to be. But again, you know when you make this turn, you're coming into a wonderful community. Um, and this is how this could look. So this is a, just a typical road section. We're going to have a lot of these. So if you're kind of cutting the road and, you know, slicing through, it's what you would look like. So this is the existing um, UG Street section. And then this is what we're proposing. And again, this would be down closer to the, um, to the Mill District. So can you just imagine now with the Greenway, the Columbia's Life Plan, with all that's happening, and, you know, how amazing this is going to be have people be able to ride their bike to a USC baseball game or, or to go visit friends and meet at White Duck Taco or something. So it could be just really great. All right, this is Hayward Street. So this is another corridor that we think really could be transformative for this district. <coughs> um, all right, so Hayward Street here, and then we've got Assembly Street. We believe that Hayward Street should be extended all the way to Assembly Street. It just goes a long way to kind of complete that network, that grid of streets in here, provides other alternatives for moving uh, <coughs> within the, yeah, excuse me, got to think. but moving with, around in the neighborhood and also getting in and out of the neighborhood. Um, so here's the existing street section. You see it's got a lovely wide boulevard that we feel it could be enhanced where we can add dedicated bike paths, increase the sidewalks here as well, and, and include parking along that too, because that's another way to do a road diet and become calm traffic. The other thing that we think is pretty amazing, the opportunity here is, that as you're doing these corridor improvements, you're, you're also looking at how you can make it more beautiful and, and really help stormwater management too as well. And so taking advantage of these of the boulevards and a lot of the green space here um, to be be able to put in some bio swells. And so this, so not only is it going to be beautiful, not only is it going to really help connectivity, but it's also really going to help us with stormwater management too as well. And this is something typical that can be done throughout the, the district. Even what, what's done on UG Street shouldn't be just landscaping or just a road die. We really, it needs to really address multi-levels here and how it can improve the environment, going back to environmental stewardship. 
All right, this is at Whaley, Whaley here, Assembly Street, the railroad bridge. And then again, and, and I'm sure all of you have been there and seen students just run <laughs> across trying to catch that light, trying to get to class. And it's not just students, it's those who lived in this area, those who work in this area. But again, <clears throat> this intersection can really be one of those beautiful places to say, this is a wonderful, livable community here for people. So again, just doing some improvements there. <coughs> and Whaley Street, this, we think this is one of those low-hanging fruits that y'all could um, probably go out and do next week, if not by Friday. But, you know, just, just get a little paint, somebody out there, the, the right-of-way is there, stripe it, put that in that bike lane in there. So, again, these are very small gestures that can go a long way to saying this is a neighborhood and a place for people. Um, all right, this is the overall view here, of, like looking at Olympia Avenue and some opportunities. Again, we think looking at realigning Hayward Street right here with the entrance going into the, to the mills area is going to be safer. You've got opportunities um, for really improving the crosswalk across Olympia here. From, so you've got Olympia Park and going all the way down Rocky Branch. Possibilities, you know, for how you might even, the, you could go under Olympia Avenue here, even looking down here long term, there, there could possibly be a bridge, a pedestrian and bike bridge that goes over there. But again, looking at really beautiful ways to get from, from one side of Olympia to the next. And this is not only beautiful, again, it's stormwater management, but then we're really building that great network of, of greenways and bike trails and sidewalks here that's so important. Okay, so here's Olympia Avenue, and this is what we're proposing. So again, putting in the, the dedicated bike lanes, improving the, 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 um, the medians here. This is along Assembly Street. So y'all imagine if that rail line right there along Assembly Street is gone, and what, so that's it right there. And then what can begin to happen? Again, we're just saying that it's just a really wonderful opportunity to redevelop it even put in some wonderful greenways and multi-use paths along in there, but it's just been fabulous. Uh, Assembly Street, this is existing, and we've got a couple of options for how this might look. So we've got our train going by right there, traffic going by. And so again, this is a little bit of a diet too, but making sure we're making Assembly Street <coughs> shared between cars. Your, your trucks can go through here, your buses can go through here, but we can also all get on our bikes and walk. And can y'all imagine if 10,000 people were able to ride their bikes and walk to a football game on a Saturday, just the impact that alone will have. And then they're gonna have really great places to stop and eat and grab a drink or get some ice cream on the way back. It's possible here. So we all need to work to consolidate those rail lines, okay? So, <laughs> but even without that, you can begin to do some wonderful things. And this is another option to, you know, having uh, separated paths too for bikes. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit more about these too in our implementation and catalyst projects. All right, so, let me just keep going. You want to do it? Um, okay, environmental stewardship is, a, is incredibly important. Again, where else? Do you have the resources that we have with the Congaree River, with the Rocky Branch, and you know just what's around here? Some great opportunities. One thing that we did notice: these are a half mile kind of head sheds, so kind of from the center out is a half mile walk, and that's where most people feel that they're comfortable to walk. Um, right where we are now, it's pretty good. If you live or work here, you can get to a park or a, a dedicated green space pretty easily, or even uh, you know up to other pathways. But in this area, the mill district, you really don't have immediate access to either connect connectivity to a greenway or to some other um, green space, which we feel is important. Um, and then these are just some examples of what you may be able to do as far as different types of green space, active space, meditation gardens, community gardens. There is one community garden that's over there now, um, but have lots of opportunities here. This is an overall view of the proposed greenway um, through the mill district. So Assembly Street is up here. And so this is Rocky Branch going through. And then you've got Granby Park, you know, right there with the Three Rivers Greenway. 
And we, I, I will have to say, Vulcan has been engaged with us throughout this, this project. Um, at first, when we started here, everybody was saying, oh, Vulcan's about to go away, so what are we going to do with Vulcan's pro project, property? And what they shared with us is they're not going anywhere for a long time. Um, but they have been at the table. They've been very open to us and some of the ideas. And they are open. So this is their property. So they are open to discussions about having a greenway, a pathway going along the side of their property right here in easement. So they did not say no. They said, yes, we are open to talking more, which we take as a very, very positive step. Other thing that's really exciting is they are open to talking about some type of easement or access um, along their property along the Congaree River. And this can be a real game changer, so which we're excited about. Because if you, can you imagine you know, being here on Assembly Street and being able to walk, bike, all the way here. My, um, that's, that's dying down right now. But, that's, so, but anyway, being, hey Nick, I put some right here. Might have a dying corner, but being able to come down all the way down to the river, and and then this is the Jordan Richmond County's Jordan Memorial boat ramp. <clears throat> Chris and I actually participated in Duke of Columbia looking at this past weekend about how you can improve access to the river. Uh, <clears throat> my team actually had Jordan Memorial boat ramp. How many of y'all been there? Y'all know where? Yeah. You need to go there. It's got so much opportunity <laughs> and potential. Um, it is the only place where you uh, you can actually do put in motorized boats along the Congaree River up here. Um, there are people who put in and take out with kayaks, which is great. It is. Um, it has lots of opportunity. There were a lot of, of, of students who were out there, you know, who, who go there just to hang out to to be quiet. There are lots of people who fish there. But again, it's, it's right there at the end of Rosewood Drive. And then USC is doing all of this work with their intramural fields. Um, thank you so much. Um, so you've got intramural fields. There, what, about right there? <laughs> so can you imagine being able to walk, bike, go to a game, do whatever. You can come this way because we're going to have this wonderful connection from the Granby Park over here. But to go all along the river, you can go here and then go all the way down to Carolina. And just imagine the possibilities here. And it's, it's really, this can be a game changer and this is incredibly doable. And you have a willing partner and Vulcan to at least have some conversations, so which we're very excited about. Okay. okay. So I want to go straight into our catalyst project. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you, on the boards over here, we have the short, medium, and long-term projects, a lot of the details. So again, broken down by one to three years, three to six years, and then over six years. But what I'd like for us to focus on right now are the capitalist projects. These are the projects that we feel are important to begin right now, as soon as the plan is adopted, right? <coughs> Do you have a page? Page 94. Page 94. Yeah. These projects actually um, do touch on each one of the big four ideas, <clears throat> which we felt was very important to address all, all of those. So I'm going to go through these briefly, and then we will open this up for conversation. Um, too as well. So the very first, let me see if that, I can get that a little bit there. Um, <clears throat> we think the one thing that's most important though is to go ahead and move forward to develop and adopt a formal agreement for equitable regulatory framework between the city and the county. Um, I have to say, and I've talked to other people in other communities, <clears throat> The city and the county coming together like they have for this project is, is pretty amazing. Um, and it just needs to be, the, and I know there have been other times, but I, I, this, this whole process has been great. And I just, as a resident of the city of Columbia and Richland County, this is kind of stuff we need y'all to keep doing. I mean, it really is wonderful. And, um, and we heard over and over again that, you know, residents really want things to be equitable. And it's not always so. You know, if you're in the county versus the city, who's doing what with what property and enforcement. 
Um, but, but to go ahead and formalize that agreement so you can begin to move forward is important. And again, we feel that that's something that you can go ahead and start that process now so that, it, that it's underway soon after adoption. The second one is to begin the management of the, transport, the trains, transportation, traffic by participating in the NEPA process. And again, that, that's going to be advertised, but it is imminent, I would say. Um, probably, hopefully the next month or so, we're hoping that that, yeah, just later, that's all we can say, sometime this fall. But again, that, that's very important for, for this community to engage in that and to, to really represent and advocate for the best alternatives, you know, dealing with traffic here. The third one is to partner with Vulcan to create community green space on the existing proper lots that they own. So Vulcan has been buying vacant lots close to their, their the quarry over there, and they're, they said because they want it to look nice. They want to be able to control what it looks like. And they are open to talking about how some of those may be able to be converted to community green space or to community gardens. And they're, that's something that can begin this afternoon, you know, have those conversations. Um, and then coordinating with the Casey Rail Yards. Again, that is, that's something that can be a game changer. Um, if we can stop trains from idling for a long time right there, you know, in the, in the Granby neighborhood and really begin to c kind of control so that, they, that their schedule supports kind of the quality of life there would be wonderful. But that, again, those conversations can happen now. Um, develop a mill district brand that reflects the community and so that you're really beginning to incorporate that because the capital city mill district was something created for this planning project and we need to take that and brand it so this becomes it's all about place but it's all about promotions and how awesome to be able to say one day oh i live in the in, in the capital city mill district or my business is in the capital city mill district. It becomes, and then when you have all, you're, you're kind of like this whole district's Australia, almost all these wonderful rainways and stuff. So it's just, it's gonna be very exciting. So, okay, um, okay, but begin removal of choke points on Rocky Branch. Um, we did not dive into the soils analysis and really looking at the stormwater management that's all in that, that report. But as y'all know, flooding is an issue here, but the, the choke points start here, closest to the river. And so beginning to remove those choke points so that it can continue it all the way up the rocky branch so that we've got great free flowing water and, and really are, are beginning to minimize the flooding that's here. Obtain the necessary right way so you can begin to <coughs> to have these green spaces, to create these green, the connections, improve Olympia Park and Pacific Park, but now is the time to go ahead and start working to obtain those easements and right-of-ways. Um, we believe that you could go ahead now and, be, and start work on improving uh, Pacific Park over here because it is a wonderful asset that's sitting right there that can be enhanced um, for, the, for this neighborhood and the community, particularly when, when you look at the number of students who are right here, and, and then uh, those that you hope to attract, but then also the whole um, entrepreneurial kind of in a vista you know, moving here becomes it becomes a really wonderful place for those who work here too as well. Um, let's see, perform a comprehensive traffic study. We touched on that earlier. You know, the master plan is kind of at a thirty thousand foot level. It's time to get down on the streets and really do that traffic study. Understand. Um, <clears throat> level of service, understand, you know, have to get the traffic counts, really begin to understand what is actually potential here and have that hard data to show for it. And that really is going to drive then how these other recommendations are, are implemented and designed. Um, provide public, um, adequate public facilities, in, including fire safety um, facilities and resources to accommodate current and future growth. There's a lot of concern here that particularly when the trains are going through and stopping traffic and you've got Assembly Street, UG Street blocked with tra uh, football traffic, that it's difficult for a fire or other emergency kind of EMS to navigate in and out of the mill district. And with the population growth that is going to happen, and the, those who live here really do feel that they need to have more um, kind of dedicated fire so even EMS right here in the neighborhood, so that's something to begin to look at, and, and particularly anticipated growth. 
and then to begin the, the complete streets implementation. I didn't necessarily touch on com complete streets during this presentation, but complete streets is really looking at a street and understanding how it can be more than just a way to move vehicular traffic. It does include landscaping. It does include you know, pedestrian and bike access. So the street really for, for everyone. But we feel that Olympia Avenue is a really great place to start because it's kind of that iconic avenue, kind of main street for the Mill District, and you can begin to implement that right now. Now again, that traffic study may tell you you need to start someplace else, but you know, for right now, we do believe that Olympia Avenue would be a great starting point. Those are the catalyst projects, those that we feel are most important to begin right now. Now, a lot of these have to do with administration and management. A lot of these are, um, and then some are pretty big ticket items. We, we do have, you know, on here, you know, who the responsible parties are. Um, costs, and now costs are extremely high level kind of order of magnitude. And we just have dollar signs just to show whether it's, you know, like restaurants, you know, you get by on a cheap day or this is where you go to propose, you know, kind of thing. So, um, so anyway, but, and then also looking at possible funding sources. Um, I do think, too, with the city and the county working collaboratively with this to implement and the other partners that y'all are going to need to and want to bring in, you, you make yourself a lot more competitive for, for, um, for leveraging and for obtaining other grants. All right, so this is, <clears throat> kind of wrap it up, just kind of reiterate, thriving community, a beautiful community, an attractive community, and a complete community where people can come here, where they can work here, they can live here, they can play here, they can hang out here, they can create here, but they can all, they can do it all right here, and then it's connected to the greater city. And that's what we're really talking about, creating and really enhancing the place for that to happen. Um, so I guess now, that's a real quick kind of run through, I guess, I don't know how far we <laughs> of the, but uh, of the whole plan, but we would be more than happy to answer questions which, um, that y'all may have. We, we do have the boards up over here. I don't know if some of y'all were able to take a look at the boards that were there. Um, but I'll throw it out for y'all. First off, I want to thank you guys for, for extraordinary effort here. I know it's been a long process, and the cooperation we're seeing between the county and the city, I think, is, uh, is the beginning of something that we'll see in other areas of town that are really important. Um, so I to digest here, so I don't have any specific questions, but I did want to commend everybody, staff, uh, the city and, and the county, uh, for all the hard work. It's a good, good document. This is just, I mean, I find this amazing. I was offering to one of the staff members that I came to Columbia in 2001, drove past this mill building empty, and hoping that I would see the day that it got restored as opposed to demolished and completely but originally lots of, you know, this old 1800 buildings were lost. So it's great. So I mean, I think this is an amazing, and I mean, I haven't spent any time trying to figure out what could happen here, but the idea of moving the train tracks off Assembly Street, that's an amazing opportunity to just, so thank you for your work and for the involvement of the community. <laughs> <laughs> <Well said. laughs> uh, thank you. I'm Karen Yip, uh, Richland County Planning Commission, and uh, I'm kind of the new on the block here um, and I'm just kind of speechless because I mean this is such an amazing project that clearly I mean you and your team and everybody involved have spent so much time on and 
I can only give you my initial impressions um, without obviously delving into this more. I don't have any specific questions, but it will start, it's interested me enough that I'm going to certainly spend a lot of time, you know, looking at this book of, of information. But from my perspective, um, a little background about me, I, I, I come from the residential real estate world. And I think that at the initial look of this, I mean, this is quite exciting. Um, I'm a native to the area, you know. Um, parents immigrated here in the mid 70s and I've kind of just, you know, seen different parts of the city grow in different ways and, you know, this particular district, I think, you know, there's been a lot of discussion for years about what to do and how to make our city better and I'm excited about the potential of this project from my personal perspective initially simply because, you know, I think that projects like these can maybe um, shine a little bit more light on Columbia as one of the cities in South Carolina. You know, oftentimes we get um, other cities like, you know, Charleston and Greenville getting a lot of the limelight here. But, you know, I'm excited for this potential project simply because um, it's obvious that you guys have put a great deal of time and effort into putting this together and for the opportunity for the city and the county to kind of come together to, for the betterment of our city, quite frankly, and the long-term range effects that it could have for our local economy, for our real estate prices, um, industry. Um, my initial assessment, personally, is I'm excited and I'm excited to learn more, quite frankly, so that maybe the next time that we meet, I will have more questions, um, you know, in that respect. So. Green space is serving multiple 
purposes here, and even you know parks and, and how the roadways are designed. So I wholeheartedly we can't just approach things just with kind of one one so set of and I would suspect that what's happening in, in this area is also being complemented by what is happening in the five points area and so forth. What is happening environmentally, I don't see uh, getting any less intense. I see it becoming more intense. So the question is, how much investment is going to be in that before you deal with the uh, other investment issue? Because yeah. if you don't deal with flooding and you don't deal with drainage and so forth, the other is going to be a waste of money. I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and true, and I'll tell you some of the other, these are kind of small things, but they can have a huge impact. But with any new development that happens within the mill district, having, you know, other standards, you know, with the tree protection and, you know, rain gardens and rain barrels. And we already have, there's a great program. There, there, there are small things that you can begin to do on a residential level and then on a commercial level to, to begin to mitigate. So, and, and, and we have those types of recommendations in here too.
Definitely. We would love to share uh, the ongoing legal process with you all and keep you informed of when those meetings occur. Okay. We, they haven't been scheduled yet. So. I don't actually, I mean, excuse my ignorance, I don't actually know what it is, so I'm going to go on the website and learn about it. I mean, it's, it's similar to what's going on with the Carolina Crossroads right uh -huh. now, where oh. they were looking at the alternatives. And so they see. have a number of public meetings and they look at the environmental and cultural and physical impacts to the community gotcha. of each of the proposed alternatives. So, SCDOT will be looking at those alternatives in addition to some that had already kind of come to the top in past studies right. and, and looking at what would be feasible or what wouldn't be feasible based on some of those impacts. So we, in your opinion, as we sit around this table and you know we get ready for this concurrent vote in a couple of weeks, would you say that it would be pertinent for us to wear into that, maybe understand what their alternatives are, to stay involved and knowledgeable about that? Yeah, I mean, like April was asking, you know, moving forward, I think that's something that will be in the press as they release. They haven't, they were in the process of hiring their consultant. So they're not at, at the point where they've scheduled those public meetings yet, but they do hope to have them scheduled this fall. So limited so, information. For yeah, so it's probably, this plan will probably be adopted either during or after that NEPA process kicks off, and that process can take a year or two. Gotcha. So that's a good way to stay involved. So which two projects are involved in the NEPA? The rail consolidation. Yeah. And those are all detailed in there? Each one of those alternatives are detailed and there's more information in the NEPA process in that report too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, before we wrap up, I'm going to make sure